Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sleeping Giants. Now, in the last game, our very, very long unbeaten run in the league was ended at the hands of our local rivals, Partizan Belgrade, and what I can only be described as a castle... A castle I'm not even using words. That is what I would describe it as a... I was going to try and say clusterfuck, but for some reason that came out. So essentially me saying clusterfuck was a clusterfuck. There you go, clusterfuckception. Anyway... Um, which means we had to pick ourselves back up from this, basically. And we had some tough, tough games this month. And I took a massive risk in one of them, basically. And, well, yeah. And bear in mind, remember we had all those injuries uh, in the last game. Thankfully, only Despotovic is actually going to be out. And unfortunately, he missed the two games this month um, that we've played. Now, he is going to be back, I think, for today's game against Kukuriki. But he has missed the two games this month. And obviously, with Jovic still out, we've had to play Strakulersi up front. Now, in our first game... We were absolutely superb, I have to say, against Rad, who are a damn good team. I've got to point out, uh, Lazic also got injured in this game, but that is not unusual. Him and Lazic have just been constantly getting injured. But we had a, a, an absolutely superb showing. And the reason this game was really, really good for me is because we very nearly shut them out. We nearly pitched a perfect game kind of thing. Th this was nil and nil on shots for them. They had no shots until stoppage time. And I was so gutted when I saw them have any shots because I really want, I've never seen um, on FM or for me anyway, a team actually get shut out entirely on shots. And we so nearly did it. Uh, we were in front on two minutes when Alexander Kov uh, Kovacevic was able to make it all one nil to us with a great finish. He's doing a decent job playing in the midfield. And I'm really, really like this guy. Not got that much more room to grow. He's one of our older players and he's 23. So what does that tell you? I got to, you know, it's great. Then 20 minutes in, Marco Pekovic, his goal was pure luck. I'm not even going to pretend that it wasn't. He crossed it in from the flank, God knows how far out. And it just went straight over Petrovic's head and straight into the net to make it 2-0 to us. But I wasn't going to knock it. Then we won a penalty on 51 minutes and Dennis Strakulersi was able to get in there and convert it to make it 4-0. And I love the image that is used in his picture because he looks like he's trying to crap out a rake. Like, that is the face that you would have if you were performing such a terrible, terrible act. Um, but yeah, he, he scored his first goal for us, uh, albeit from the penalty spot, but he's doing an okay job at filling in. He's nothing special, but... He's doing the job that we need him to do for the moment. Then, straight from that highlight, we actually got another goal with Vukan Savicevic with a spectacularly good finish. Just a good long-range drive. I'm really, really happy with that. Um, he's not too bad at long shots. They're getting better, though, and he is getting better, too. And I really, really like this kid. He's got a lot of potential, and I want to see how he does for us. He could be one of the keys to our success in this save, basically. And just to show you the uh, stats for the game, again, two half, two half chance, sorry, two clear cuts, five half chances. They had just the one half chance, which was actually their goal, on, their shot on target. Um, we were dominant and Rad are a good side. They are right up there. They're in that sort of second chasing pack. So that was a good result. In the next game, now the re is where I took the massive risk. And the reason I did this is because I saw the lineup, because we were playing Borac in our next game. And I saw the lineup that they were their formation. I've never seen their formation before. I've never seen come up against it at all on Football Manager so far this year. Anyway, it was a, it was a four three two one, but with a back four and two wing like two sort of complete wing backs or sort of pushed slightly further forward. Then a row of three. Then a two like above those two like two, uh, two attacking mids. So like two three centre mids, two attacking mids, and then one striker on the top. It was like a Christmas tree. It was a Christmas tree formation. That's what it was. It was like something out of the 90s. It was, I'm pretty sure Glenn Hoddle could have been managing this team, um, but he wasn't. And I wondered how we were going to cope with it, with the system we played. So I decided to take a massive risk, basically, and set us to push higher up to try and condense, squash them in a little bit and go past into space. Because if we could squash them, there might be some space in behind. And it worked. Thank God. Um, because... I was a little bit worried about playing a high line, but I think when we come up against these more unorthodox formations, playing a high line and squeezing the space and then passing it over the top seems to be the way that we can get around it. Um, this was basically the, a game of two players. Alexander Katai, basically with two tap-ins from the left wing, coming at the far post and just tapping it in um, because we just squeezed them so far up the pitch they couldn't do anything. He's had a great season for us uh, despite those injuries, but still eight league goals and 12 league starts is pretty impressive. And then... Um, I was happy with that, and we were playing. We were playing well. Things were just cruising in the game. Then Avramovsky scored two absolute screamers, like 
I don't know where they came from. He's not been that great for us. I know he could potentially be an awesome player, but he's not really there yet. And yeah, he was absolutely bloody immense. He's like one of them. He ran through completely. I don't know where Strakwalersi was at this point. He was nowhere to be seen. He ran through, took it past the defender, and from not even anywhere near the D, just rifled one in the top corner. It was phenomenal. And as you can see, they had no chances at all in this game of any sort. We had five clear-cut chances and seven half chances. We probably could have had six or seven goals in this game. Um, and I'm tempted to play a high line again, but I don't know if that's maybe just because it was against that system. But if things start to go wrong for us in the game, I know what I can try. That That's the key for me now. I know a thing that might just save us. So hopefully that will happen today because back-to-back 4-0 -back wins have been superb. And it's kind of brought us back into things after the poor result against Partizan. And it leaves us here with three points... Um, off the top still, and it is still Jagodina to chase. And as you can see, we are still level on points with Partizan, but they are ahead of us because of the head-to-head -head records, which is irritating, uh, despite our goal difference being vastly superior to theirs, and we scored the most goals of any team. And as you can see, it is now just a top four, as Donji Shrem have completely slipped away, and Rad were actually the nearest competitors, basically. Um, Radniki have already been put into the relegation playoff. That's how poor they've been. I think we get to play them again soon, I don't know. Um, but the problem now is, for us... With five games to go, we're three points behind Nagodina. Now, if we can reel back those three points somehow from them having games against other top sides, which I don't know who they're playing today. Who are they playing against? They're playing against Mlados. They'll probably win that. We will still be behind them because the goal difference is not relevant. It's done on head-to-head. -head. And remember, we drew against them and we lost in that horrific game where I had nine clear-cut chances and we didn't win the game. We had lost, in fact. So we need to really claw four points back off of Yagodina. And that is going to be tough, especially when Kukuriki and Partizan are right in there too. So the key thing for us today is to win against Kukuriki. If we can beat them then that will put us four points clear, and I will kind of consider them out of the title race by that point. Because if Yagodina win, which you feel they will, they'd then be seven points from the top, and you'd have to say seven points in four games is quite a lot to claw back, and they'd probably be out of it, which would then leave just us, Partizan, and Yagodina. Partizan today are away at Napladak, who have been a bit of a surprise package. And remember, Partizan lost against uh, OFK, so there's always the chance for them to cause a bit of a slip-up. That is all we can really hope for today. So squad-wise, this is what's happened. Top goal scorers, of course, still Despotovic with 19 in 19. Fantastic. Keita is the second with 9. Assists-wise, it's Savicevic and Gavric with 12 each. Player of the match is Vukan Savicevic. Pass rating, Kovacevic with 87, which is fantastic. Yellow cards, Petkovic with 8 is the most. And, of course, the three red cards for Lazic, Jovanovic and Planic. Average rating, of course, is Savicevic. Uh and Keitai, but if you actually look at the um, the league, it is still Savicevic with a 7.71. I think he's almost a shoe in to be player of the season, and rightly so. He's 21, and he's been absolutely on fire. Um, other things to point out are that um, uh, Lubisa... No, yeah, Lubisa are... I can't remember his surname off the top of my head, and I'm apologising for that. But he's been absolutely banging them in for our under-19s and our reserve side already. So I'm thinking next season he might start getting some first-team football for us to maybe play in the same kind of position as a backup to Savicevic. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Right, let's get straight into the match preview, because... Uh, ooh, this is an interesting one. A sort of 4-5-1 system. How fast is this lad? Do we know? He's not super fast. He's young, he's not that great in terms of stamina. I wonder if we could get away with that high line idea again. I could always drop it back if it doesn't work. But I'm thinking about playing a high line. Now, so what I did in the last game was I pushed higher up and I put pass into space on. That is all I changed. And I turned off hit early crosses, I think. Um, and look for the overlap. Was Yeah, that was what we changed. And I just want to see if this will have a different effect on Strakulersi is still going to start up front because I think despite, don't tell me, he's still injured. No, he isn't, but he's still not fully fit yet. So Tra Strakulers is going to get a third game. Um, and Peshnik is going to have to fill in at right back because we have uh, Marko Pekovic is injured, which is irritating. Gojic is so close to being fit again too, which is great to see. I think today the key is going to be Savicevic uh, and Basancic. Those two are going to be the uh, the linchpins of this side. So yeah, I just want to see if this will work against a team like Kukuriki. They're a good side. This could be taking a massive risk, I know, but it worked well for us in the last game. And I just want to see if maybe pushing up high, especially against one striker, might well be the the key for us. We're at home as well, so they're going to be expecting that. They're going to expect us to sort of try and compound ourselves on them. So by pushing up, we'll squeeze the space and maybe, just maybe, 
get what we need from this game. I, I've like we won like our first five or six, maybe I think five live comms in a row, and I don't think we've won since then. It seems to have completely reversed itself. So we were losing loads of games outside of live comms. Now we're losing the live comms or drawing them and not winning and winning all the other games. It's really strange, and I really want to get a win today to keep that momentum going. Um, because I feel like if we lose today, we could really struggle to get anywhere near the title. Basically, with four games to go, we could be six points off the top, and I think that would be us out of the title race. If we lose today and Yagodina win, that's us as good as dead, basically. So let's hope that that is not the case. Obviously, we've still got Yagodina in the cup final um, at some point soon, but it looks like things have started quite well for us in terms of shots, but you just can't tell this early on. Yagodina are already in front against Mladost. Um, it's been an interesting start. A draw wouldn't be the worst result, but I'd much rather win. We're getting a lot of the ball, uh, and look at that high line. But I'm just hoping that, look, at that's great from Planich. Step right up and squeezing the space, forcing them back a little bit. And that's what I like to see. Little bit, this is kind of what we did against Borac. We really just kept the ball a lot better doing this. So Vizovic, can he get around the corner to someone? Around the... F oh! Strakulersi with an absolutely superb opportunity there, but he's not scored from open play for us this season, and that is the worry. Well, our plan isn't crossing anyway. We've got direct play on anyway, so random crossing is... We're looking like the better side. Keeping the ball more, had a couple of chances, um, but uh, as yet we do not lead the game, and that is the key for us here. Against Borac, we'd got ourselves in front early, or relatively early, or certainly in the first half. But Sanchez, don't let him... Sh oh, God. Oh, God. I worry now. This is where we could get caught, although... Oh, th that's the danger, I suppose, of playing such a high line. Where is our halfback as well? Why is he not sinking? I'd prefer him to be sort of covering a little bit deeper, because there is this space emerging, and he's going to play him in. <laughs> Thankfully, their striker is not the quickest, but... All right, good. Also, it's good to see Kareeman back in goal, because he's a bit more stable back there. We've looked better than them in this first half, but not sort of better enough, if that makes sense. Not like wonderfully better. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a few things we could change. Maybe, um, maybe we could turn uh, that on, which will automatically turn that off. And yeah, try that instead, because they did, I mean, as much as they say we should play, they said we play, should, should play short passing, and then he said we should play long passing. So frankly, the assistance on this game is sometimes absolutely useless for that kind of information. Um, but we haven't been the greatest. We need a second half goal. We absolutely need a second half goal. We played decent in the first half, but the one decent chance fell to Strackle and You've got to feel like if that was Despotovic, it probably would have been a goal. 45 minutes to really kick on here. We're definitely the better side. But look at that, Yagodina are just looking absolutely unstoppable at the moment. I feel like even if we won every game from now until the end of the season, we might struggle to get anything. We might struggle to win this. And that's the problem. That early season form where we lost some poor games is kind of what's haunted us as of late. Um, Partizan are also winning, which is worrying. Neither team have really had a shot in this second half. So clearly throwing long balls into the box isn't working here. Um, so I'm just going to wait a little bit more, and thank God that's one of their players. Well, I can't bring anyone else on for Strakulersi, that's the issue here, really. Something isn't working. Um, I'm going to turn off Pass Into Space, and turn off that. But we are still going to leave it on Push Higher Up, because that is sort of squashing them in a little bit. Um, maybe try Whipped Crosses, just try and whip that ball in a little bit cause some havoc for them in the defence. Carry him in with a long ball forward. A, we've got a few players in there. Savicevic with a good touch, actually, to bring that out of his feet. But can Lazovic run with it? We've just got to worry that we lose the ball. Ooh, knock through the channel. What was that? Woeful pass. Please don't get us into trouble. Todorovic, great touch. And Savicevic, can he have a shot? Will he? Strakulasi, 1-0. That is a huge, huge moment for Red Star Belgrade. 1-0 to us. Oh, but the thing is, Yagodina are still winning, and we've got, and Partizan are winning too. It just seems like we can just win every game from now to the end of the season and not win the league, and I genuinely think that could happen. Great place to play here. Nice little tight stuff. So Visovic with a lovely ball play through, and Strakulersi, first goal for us this season from open play. What a moment for it to happen in a game against Kukuriki. We've been the better side and thoroughly deserve the lead. Now, what we don't want to happen is for it to just go to shit right about now. Um, but we don't want to sit back and allow it, sorry, and allow them to, whoa, 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 we need to make substitutions, sorry. I feel like I'd already done it, right, Kovacevic is going to come off and, oh, we struck Lursi. 
Who is this? Milos Zukanovic. Who are you? Oh, he's just... Oh, yeah, we'll bring on Rakic. No, Rakic will come on. He's He can play there, and he's not even that bad. Uh, Kovacevic, oh, he's a defensive midfielder. Where's, is Mihailovic on the bench? Yes, he is. Okay, good. Um, if I was feeling like rolling the dice, I'd bring on Avramovsky in place of Basancic, but I just don't have the um, the balls to do that right now because I feel like I'll maybe bring him on sort of 84 minutes sort of time, 82, 83. In like 10, oh no, in like 10 minutes time, I might bring him in. Um, don't just let him drop that through. Please don't, please. Oh, good clearance. That was great defending in the end, but we shot. We shouldn't be letting them have chances like that. They've barely created anything in this game. They've had one shot on target the entire game. We are the best side. We've done everything right and deserve to win this game. And I don't want to see yet another game like this in a live comp where we are so close to winning it and then just get screwed at the final moment. Right, now uh, we're going to bring on Avramovsky for Basancic because... Or should we? Or should we bring him on for Zavisa? No, no. We'll bring him on for Basancic. He's, he's looking a bit knackered and it would certainly... We could do with someone being in there to shore up that midfield area. Um, we've only got a few minutes to go now. So once this has set itself, I'm going to just give it a couple of minutes. Right. Now, we're going to go to defensive. Not anything silly. And we're going to waste some time. And we're just going to kill the last five minutes of this game. In a game we've thoroughly deserved to... Oh, no. Mihailovic. Pashnik. I think this is actually going to happen before the the change. Please don't lose the ball. Lazovic. Have a little dribble, maybe? Oh, God, come on, please don't. Not again. I can't take it anymore. I cannot take another result like this. You know when you can just see it coming from a mile away? I feel like it's going to happen again. Ball played in the channel and well tackled by Ancic. Superb defending. Lazic now can bring it away, but don't do anything silly. That's it. Just keep the ball. The highlight hasn't happened yet, so that's what's worrying me. I feel like we're about to make another poor pass. Or maybe we'll catch him on the break and we'll get another goal. That would be delightful. If he could, no, the, the chance has gone. If he could cut back and knock it in. Oh, he has. No, he hasn't. Oh, yes, he has. Rakic. Oh, ho, ho, mate. How close was that? That should be enough to win this game for us. Oh, 30 seconds. Mihailovic with the cross. Antic. Back to Mihailovic. Will he cross it in or will he just keep it? That's better. Back to Peshnik. Just try and keep the ball for the last few minutes of this, the last few seconds of this game. Don't need to try any silly business. Mihailovic, Avramovsky knocks it forward, maybe. In for Rakic, can he turn? Savicevic, ah, there was a good ball to slide in there. Lazovic, a bit of, oh, could have had a pop there. Peshnik, anyone going to actually shoot? You may as well shoot when you're in that area. I know we just had to waste time, but there's no point in wasting time in front of goal. And there it is, Red Star Belgrade 1, Kukuriki 0. And I think pushing up higher might well be... The missing link in our tactic was to push up higher. Playing that higher line seems to work better for us. Like we just sort of sort of squeeze them off the ball and they can't seem to get anywhere near it. And that high pressure situation. And Parzan, did they? Yes! I knew Napradak could do us a favour. So there we go. We are now the closest rival to Jagodino, who just seem to be like an unstoppable freight train at the moment. Four games to go and we need to basically haul back four points off them. And I'm not sure it's going to be possible. But we're going to win. I'm going to try and make sure we win every single game between now and the end of the season like we have been doing to try and do our best to get in there. So where does that leave us in the league? Uh, that is not the right button. We're in second, as you can see. Um, we're doing very, very well. We're having a decent, like, it's a decent record. I have to say, Jagodina have just been so clinical at times. Um, it's unbelievable. It's un something else that's unbelievable is the potential for Donji Shrem to actually get dragged into a relegation fight. It, it's um quite surprising actually look if you look at the past positions of like I mean Jagodina have been top for a while now um, I don't think we ever really topped it now we've never actually topped the league at any stage this season so it'd be quite an important one if we did win it but the key thing to note is look at Donji Shrem they've just oh this is a nice new feature I didn't notice this before I've not looked on this many for a while I'm assuming this lot have been bottom pretty much from day one well, day 13 still pretty awful um it's also good to see like Boric is one kind of just goes on the opposite. They were bottom for a while, but now they've actually gone up as far as a sixth at times. So uh, there we go, guys. In the next episode, because we've got quite a few games. Oh. Right. OK, what we're going to do in the next episode, we're going to come back and we're going to play the cup final against Jagodina. Um, then in the final episode, 
of the season, we're going to play the last game in, in its own episode because, let's face it, the chances are it's going to be a season-deciding game because look how tight it's been, basically. So that's what we're going to do. So in the next episode, we'll be talking about these games against slightly weaker opposition. <clears throat> well, Radnicky are doing okay, but we've beaten them a couple of times this year already. Um, and then we're going to do the Cup Final and the Livecom. And then in the next episode, we'll do the Donji Shrem game because I do want to Livecom the Cup Final and I also want to Livecom the last game of the season. So yeah, that's the way we're going to do it, guys. Um, so guys, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the episode. And if you'd like to even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Sleeping Giants in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the Agodino game in the Cup Final. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.